Now, the first three mayoral contests in the capital have turned out to be two horse races. It's proved difficult for the Liberal Democrats in particular to make an impact. Consider a possible backlash from their role in the coalition government, and they could have an even bigger problem this time. They seem in no hurry to choose a candidate, and some would run a mile from the prospect just now. But one man who certainly wants to do it is the former Lib Dem MP, Lembit Opik. Andrew Cryan reports. And they're off. Well, except they're not. While Ken Livingstone and Boris Johnson are jockeying for position, our third party are yet to get off the grid. Their attempt to find a candidate last year had to be abandoned. The excuse this time was a lack of candidates to meet diversity criteria, but it is an excuse. Really, if you've got a candidate who really wants to run and isn't bad, go ahead. But there is one man putting himself about as the potential challenger, Limbit Opik. Perhaps best known for the fact he used to go out with one of the noughties pop duo The Cheeky Girls and a TV weather presenter, Sean Lloyd. Mr Opik is pitching himself as the candidate with a big enough personality to take on Boris and Ken. But personality isn't always enough. Last year, he lost his parliamentary seat in Wales. I think the key question for Lembit is he's not resolved why he lost Montgomeryshire. Until he does that, the party has a suspicion that he's not running for the party, he's running for himself. And why did he lose in Montgomeryshire? He spent far too much time focused on being a minor celebrity and not enough time fighting a local community campaign. The Politics Show asked every London Lib Dem MP, council leader and London Assembly member if they were backing Lembit. None said there were. <coughs> but a lack of support in Parliament doesn't seem to deter him. This online campaign video pastiching the sitcom Citizen Smith has become a minor online hit. Although some have pointed out the fact it features a lot of Lembit, but doesn't mention a single policy. In order to see whether the public buy it, Mr Opik will have to win over his party first. That may be no easy feat. Power to the people! Andrew Cryan uh, reporting there. Lemba Opik uh, is here uh, again. Um, do you have a problem with your party here? Uh, you don't appear to have the support of them. Well, the selection process hasn't even officially commenced. I was hoping it would have been done by now. I feel we're being left out slightly in the cold, as you suggested before, with Boris and Ken motoring on ahead and us not having an official candidate. So you'll have to ask other people that. Mm. What I've got is a proposition. It's a left of centre proposition, a libertarian proposition. And also I've got political experience, and if that's what the party wants in London, that's what I offer. Do you see any signs of a, you know, stop Lem Lembit, uh, anyone but Lembit Opic campaign? Well, no one's come forward, uh, and occasionally I get journalists who call me up and say they've heard this and that. Mm. I will not uh, brief behind a person's uh, uh, b back and... So you, you can't pinpoint well, it yeah, anywhere, I no? Mean, yeah, and, and I wouldn't do it like that. If people have genuine issues, they're perfectly welcome either to express them through programmes like this, or to me directly, and I'll engage about, with them. What about the silence? Isn't the silence worrying? A deafening silence, a lack of support? Um, I think it's understandable because the people in the party are perfectly entitled to wait and see who else stands against me. Perhaps they're not as left-wing as me, but perhaps they don't like my libertarian agenda. Those are legitimate uh, debating points, but I'm not going to shadow box with people who may brief behind my back but aren't willing to say so in public. That's just not credible. Why would you want to do it at this time? Um, well, I mean, a hint at that in my introduction, that obviously a number of people we understand would not want to do it at this stage because it's a hiding to nothing, not just because there are you know, two very prominent candidates, but because of the Liberal Democrats' you know, role in the coalition government at the moment. I joined the party when it was at about 3% in the polls, famously with a statistical variation of plus or minus 4%. So I've, I've never joined the party mm. uh, as, a, as a career opportunity. It's because I, I believe in the agenda. Exactly the same reason I'm putting myself forward now. I'm realistic. The party's got a mountain to climb. But, but my narrative, in my view, is meaningful. It provides uh, a liberal democratic colour to the uh, mayoral campaign in a way that I think other people couldn't offer. So, so it's really about that, but about do, getting that message Do you across. expect this, you know, th 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 this, these elections falling mid-term with the cuts agenda starting to unravel. Do you expect, though, aren't you heading for punishment from left-leaning, particularly left-leaning voters who might have voted Liberal Democrats in the past, but they won't do it this time? 
It'll be very interesting to answer that question after the 6th of May. That's yeah. the next big test. Let's, let's try and answer it now, though, before we get there as well. Oh, though. What oh, do you think? What oh, do you anticipate? Oh, what do you feel? With that caveat, I, I always try to answer questions directly. I think we are in a difficult situation. The Barnsley Central by-election result, where we got 4%, was very poor. And in, in that sense, you're right. One of the problems with the mayoral election is, is where it falls in the electoral agenda. And if the recession isn't clearly over, that could be tricky. What's the leadership got wrong? Uh, nothing probably in terms of the cuts agenda. That has to happen. Uh, right. There's a debate about whether it's too intense or not intense enough. But one piece of advice I would give the leadership is differentiation. The Conservatives, even in a coalition, still look like Conservatives. One of the concerns I had at the party conference, which happened recently, was that we look too much like Conservatives as well. We need to look like Liberal Democrats. Once again, I think that's something I can get across. But how? Because we're not, but we're not going to be able to escape from the um, severe financial situation. So you take this kind of big spending areas for the mayoralty, policing and, and transport, both facing 20% um, cuts. Um, how on earth are you going to kind of sell? How are you going to deal with those? But there are some limitations, and uh, it would be foolish of me to sit here and say that uh, I could overturn the, uh, the difficulties in the country single-handedly as mayor. But what you can do as mayor is put a liberal and democratic agenda forward. For example, uh, I'm very concerned to make sure that small businesses do better in London. I want to have a referendum on a 24-hour tube as much as that's possible. Uh, I was talking to Ken Livingstone last week. There are ways you can independently fund work in London. So you can have a distinctive agenda take within like that, that campaign. A 24-hour tube thing, you know what the, the cost of that would be. Extraordinary. Um, at the moment, we're struggling to get an upgrade. What, would you put, push, put the upgrade work aside and go for a kind of 24-hour tube idea instead? No, no, I wouldn't put it aside because the upgrade has to happen. But it's it's a good example. Where are well, you let me get the money from. Let, let me give you an example on that. I want to have a referendum of the people of London to see if they'd be willing to pay a differential fare later on uh, after a certain time of day to make up for the additional so cost. Very odd to have a referendum on such a sort of narrow one issue. I mean, um, you gonna, is that going to would that sort of be the beginning of several referendums on anything you weren't sure about? Uh, no, it wouldn't be on everything. But this is so important because you're, I would be asking uh, the public to pay probably quite a lot more for the privilege or the benefit of having a nighttime tube. It seems to me, in a matter of judgment, a reasonable way to do it. And if London says no, then the mayor has but to respect you that. You broadly accept the pain that, that has to come, the 20% cuts and these budgets over the three, four years? Yes, by and large I do. Uh, whether we're going too fast or not fast enough, is that is an unanswerable question at the moment. But in principle, all three major parties know that you have to make cuts. The London mayoral election isn't going to be about that. It's about the colour of politics. How do you think you'd be as a negotiator going in to see the Chancellor George Osborne or the Transport Secretary Philip Hammond? I've run business, I've worked in a multinational, I had a global role there. And if you treat this not as a tribal thing but as a, as a business thing, then I think I've got the business experience to do it, and rather more than many uh, other colleagues had. Uh, have you in any idea of any kind of potential rivals? Not yet. Uh, there were some other people who put in to be shortlisted last year. I was the only person who was actually approved at that time. I don't know who else is thinking about it. It is a tough job. You've already pointed out the mountain that we've got to climb. I know that I want to do it. If London wants me and if the London Lib Dems want me, I'm here. Okay. Thanks very much indeed Thank for joining us. And with that, John, back to you.